okay, attempt number two at going live. Hopefully this will work out well. I hope some of you guys came from Flip Aquatics, and if you don't know who he is, be sure to subscribe to his channel. Also, my thumbnail is the derpiest thumbnail in the world. Little Flip decided to participate. She also wants attention. Do you see this? She's like, pet me. So I thought that I would make a live video where I introduce all of my pets to you guys. And I wanted to start with Littlefoot because she is my little soulmate over here. She is about eight or nine years old. By the way, hi to everyone. Hi, Mobile Gaming. Hi, Stanley the dog. Oh, she's, she, she needs to be petted, clearly. It is very important. Do I need, yeah, I can't, I can't stop petting. I can't stop petting the cat. So her name is Littlefoot after the movie Land Before Time. A banana will be in there too. She chilling. What? But right now, I wanted to introduce her. She is actually a farm kitten. She was born on a farm where um, I used to take horseback riding lessons. And, oh, big, big kitty stretch. And she was kind of sick, so we took her, in, took her to the vet. She had an eye and a lung infection. And we got her all better, and she's been my buddy ever since. She used to belong to my ex, as well as his sister. And then somehow, she came to me, and stayed with me forever, and has been with me ever since. So, she's my little, little baby. Where's Banana? Banana. Banana is chilling in her crate. This is her little second home. She sleeps wherever she wants to. She usually eats in there, but... Apparently it's nap time for her. Nap time for Banana. I wish it was nap time for me. And then, of course, yes, do you, you need something? Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna paw my face? You're so cute. You are the cutest kitty ever. Taking over the live stream. By the way, guys, I will be showing you my fish as well. I'm just starting with Littlefoot because she wants attention and Pretty much what Littlefoot wants is what Littlefoot gets, right? Because she's queen. Who else? Let's see. Let me look at the comments. Well, we have some moderators today with us. So if we do have um, mobile gaming is one of the mods. So if we do have any trolling. Um, oh, Cynthia is here. Yay. Uh, so if we have any trolls, then, you know, hopefully that will be dealt with. I'll try to have... Uh, make more moderators. The way I decide on moderators is, well, I can't make anyone a moderator on my phone because I don't know how, but what I do is I pay attention to who is on a lot of my videos and who comments a lot, and usually that those people will be made mods. So over time, you will win mod status. Also, McMurray Farms is here. Yes, you will work yourself up to become a mod. <laughs> that would be cool. So let's see, let's go continue on our tour. Can I flip my camera? Yes, I can. Okay. So right here, I have protected my vacuum from the bunny because Mochi is out and I didn't feel like moving my vacuum. And this is Mookie the cat. Mookie's a male and he is a demon cat. I got him from Paws, Chicago when he was one year old. He was attacked by some sort of animal because he used to have uh, scratches on his back and his back was shaved. And he also had two black markings on his face. You might see them in some of my uh, older videos because he's in some old videos. And we always call those demon marks because Mookie's a little demon. Yeah, he'll try to bite you. He'll, yeah, he will, you're a little butt. M Mookie has nerve damage in his tail and the base uh, kind of like near his butt. So because of that, he sometimes gets twitches, and he's very sensitive, so you just gotta respect his space. Sometimes he'll be a snuggle bug, and he will cuddle you, and be your lap cat, and when he does cuddle you, he'll drool on you, which is another thing. And sometimes he will hiss at you and bite you for no reason. So, he, if you've ever seen some of the videos, I have a video of him trying to eat a cactus. I have videos of him being befriended by a bunny. When we were pet sitting the priest's bunny named Henyo, Henyo fell in love with Mookie and they had a one-sided romance. Uh, also a question, do you keep shrimp? McCreamy Farms is asking. Actually, not yet. I would like to change that. I've never had shrimp 
before and I would definitely like to try. Ooh, let me see if I can flip the camera a second talk. Yeah. So I've never had fr <laughs> words. What are words? I've never had shrimp before. And oh my gosh, it's so dark. Let me turn on the light over here. Walking towards the light. Turning on the light. Okay, there we go. So I've never had shrimp. I really want to. Uh, what I need is I need to set up either a tank for shrimp or figure out if I can keep them in one of my uh, tanks that I already have established. The problem is all of my tanks have bettas in them and you know how bettas are aggressive and whatnot. I don't know if that's going to really work out very well. Are my... Flip Aquatics, you're getting shrimp. We're, we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna make it happen. I think we, we'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. One of the tanks I was considering, would it work if I put it in my sorority tank? Or would my sor fish, would they, would they eat all of it? I, feel, I, I worry. I feel like these guys would attack them because they're not exactly the most nice group of gals. And if we go here... Uh, when Mr. Bubbles, when his time comes to pass, which he seems to be getting worse, even though he's still moving around. I was considering maybe having shrimp right here, except I'd have to move Demon Betta out. I don't know what I should do. I have two tanks here, but this one is going to be for some fish I'm getting very soon from a local friend. And then... So that's already taken, and those fish would eat shrimp too, but I have this little tiny one. I don't know, it would shrimp work in a little tiny 5.5 gallon? Because originally I was going to have this 5.5 gallon for more males, but because I keep getting more males for breeding projects and whatnot, I thought maybe I would just get another 20 gallon long at the Petco dollar per gallon sale, and then just divide it into five or six ways, and then just keep a lot of my males in one tank all together. So, I have no clue what I want to do. And I really have to redo the, this tank. I need to get a new light because this light is breaking. I'll show you. I tried taking it apart and fixing it, but it only works halfway. So that's all I have right now. I have to redo this tank. This tank is just it's usually what I use for my breeding tank. So I put one of the placats in here. He's just chilling in here. It's kind of dirty. I gotta clean it up. So that's kind of what's happening within this. Let's, let me let's see if I can look at some of the comments. How can I introduce a male betta into a guppy tank? So, some bettas will murder your guppies. Like this one. He's super murderous. But him, before he was sick, uh, he actually did really well with all the guppies. And the breeding container that he's in now because he is sick and not doing too well, it's actually a good container to use to introduce uh, your betta to guppies. What will happen is if you put your betta into a breeding container for about, I would say two weeks is a good period of time, your betta over time will get desensitized to seeing all the fish swim around him every single day, and he'll just get bored of trying to go after them and murder them, and he'll start to lose interest. Usually that doesn't happen with all males, like this one would murder anybody, that's why he only has endlers. But certain bettas, like Mr. Bubbles, he just got bored. And so when I let him out, he just didn't care about all of them. But yeah, he's not doing too well. He's just kind of struggling to swim. He's still, he's still eating and stuff. So at least that's good. The floor is lava. <laughs> that's so true. Speaking of the floor is lava, I just let Bunny out. Mochi the bunny. I did a video on her on Monday, so be sure to check it out. I let her out to play, and she literally make, made like a couple rounds, and then now she's back in her cage, chilling at her granite. She's like, it's it's too hot. What about getting a seahorse? Oh, first of all, let me, hold on, let me take off my cover off my phone, because my phone is overheating. This live stream is apparently too hot. By the way, it's my little simple cover. But this live stream is too hot for, every, for everybody for on my phone, because you guys are too awesome. But let's see... How come you have so many bettas in one tank? Oh, you're talking about this one? These are all babies that I bred, and I am growing them out. So as they grow out, I am going to be separating them. And what I do... Whoa, whoa, I didn't mean to press it. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> what I do is I separate them in these jars where I do daily water changes, and I'm going to be selling these guys. 
So they're only here temporarily. These are the bigger ones that would fight each other. So they're separated. Uh, and that's kind of what I do. Check out Nikru brand LED lights on Amazon. Cheap and awesome. I will actually because I need uh, cheap and awesome. How do I stop an aggressive fish? Um, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. I try to take lessons from what I've learned from uh, keeping African cichlids. And excuse my little messy kitchen. So with African mm -hmm. cichlids, usually they're all pretty aggressive. And what people do to manage that aggression and reduce it is they do a couple things. They overstock an aquarium, which for certain fish that are territorial will work. For bettas, overstocking, I don't know if that really works. Giving bettas a lot of room really helps. And then controlling the temperature. So if the temperature is a little colder, their metabolism will slow down. And that will kind of reduce aggression a little bit. Uh, you don't want the temperature too cold. I'm talking about like one or two degrees than what you would normally have. And then another thing is feeding them often. Fish that don't eat um, like once a day will be a little bit more aggressive. If you feed them, let's say, twice or three times a day, very small amounts, that will help reduce aggression a little bit. But if you're dealing with bettas, it's kind of really tricky, to be honest. So you have to do your best. Let's see. Mobile gaming. I tried spawning my first betta pair several times, and my male kept eating the eggs. So this spawn, so this spawn, I removed him before the eggs hatch. Um, what you can do is, because uh, some males will do that. I've never had it happen to me because I'm only bred one male. But if you go to the channel um, Moon River Bettas, she actually has a video on how to hatch uh, betta eggs without uh, a male, and she uses, I think, malachite green. Or blue I don't remember she just adds it and what that does is it prevents uh, fungus from uh, getting on the eggs let's see I tried to call my flower horn after he, he nearly killed an Oscar I just left it a flower horn certain fish are are sometimes gonna be highly aggressive regardless um, flower horns I think are one of those fish uh, with bettas, it depends. Some bettas, in, in my experience of keeping male bettas, I've had some bettas that were super nice and mellow, and then some that wanted to murder everybody, like demon betta. And let's see, in your opinion, are starter kids worth it? I want the, to get top fin 20 gallon starter kit. I, hmm, I don't know. I haven't gotten a starter kit in a while. The last one I got, I think, was like 15 years ago. So I think what I would do is, as my channel's growing, as I'm getting more support on Patreon uh, and through Super Chats, and then once my website is up, I'll also have PayPal donations and stuff, I think I would like to try getting a few starter kit tanks just to try them and review them. I could also uh, try to email a few companies and maybe someone will let me try one, but I actually don't have a clue at the moment. JW Aquarium says 19 away from uh, 200 subscribers. Well, I hope that more people will come and subscribe to your channel. Go check out JW Aquariums. Let's see. And. Oh, she uses methylene blue. There we go. Princess Lunchbox helped. Thank you. Um. By the way, Princess Lunchbox is also a breeder, and hopefully, maybe soon, she will have videos and a YouTube channel, too. That would be awesome. I, I'm always really excited uh, when more breeders are getting on YouTube, because I think it will help a lot of new breeders, but it also helps uh, people that have pet betta fish kind of see a different aspect of betta fish care. So, yay. Can you please show your betta tank? Uh, the one with the sorority, wait, is it this one? Because this is my female tank. This one has only females, including a new female that I got from a breeder. We're going to be swapping. I'm going to be sending him uh, one of my, it's Floor Aquatics. I made a video on that when I, uh, I think, um, was it Friday? Or I don't, it was, I think, two, three videos ago. But she's my new lady. She's getting kind of acclimated and getting used to the other girls. So these are all the girls. And then, let's go back over here. This is all the babies. These are the smaller one of my uh, koi fry. I have some that are really showing their koi patterns. And then I have some that are cellophane. They're really cute. 
Actually, today is my water change day, so I need to do water change. Um, pretty much all my tanks, so everything is a little bit messy. Man, my phone is really hot. What is your opinion of PETA? PETA is scary because they they make it sound like they care about animals and they have exposed some pet stores and, and some places for cruel treatment, which, which is good, but their goals pretty much are to end pet ownership as a whole. So they want to just prevent us from owning cats, dogs, fish. They want it to completely stop, so... And they're a little crazy. Anybody that's, like, too... Um, what's it called? Too extreme in their views is no, no bueno. Let's see. Oh, Flip Aquatic. Sorry, I got a call. Uh, disappearing and coming back. Uh, who else is here? Oh, is Simply Betta here? I recently discovered Simply Betta on, like, literally yesterday, I think, or the day before. On I was just at my recommended videos, and I got so excited because I love her uh, little fish room that's in um, a bathroom. Because my fish room, as you can see, is in a kitchen. I mean, there's my stove. So I have a kitchen fish room, like my microwave and everything is like right next to my fish. And then I used to have a table here in my kitchen. That went away. And then, what's it called? This is my messy sink. So, kitchen fish room. I, I love when people kind of utilize whatever space they have to kind of set up their fish. And I need to set up because this is such a big mess i need to go through everything i need to set up this tank and i need to set up some more stuff and i want to see if i can get another 20 gallon long i don't know where i'm going to put that i think i might have to get rid of my microwave so i can put a tank right here i don't know guys i don't know because i mean i could put it in the other rooms but this room has since it has no windows which is another really weird thing it's like a cave in here uh i don't have to worry about algae problems as long as i have all my lights on a ti timer so this is the ideal place plus there's no draft which is kind of why I I move oh whoa guys there's a power outage uh oh and it's happening live oh my goodness gracious oh it's back it's back <laughs> so weird oh my goodness Guys, what is happening to my house? This is another reason why I can't have too many fish tanks because this house is um, This house is so old. It's a bungalow, which is a historical style of a house that they're known for Chicago And they're kind of really poorly built And this happens at least it's all back. I mean these guys won't care because they're in jars and the nice thing about Betta's is Betta's are you know they breathe oxygen also from the top so if my tank stopped functioning for a while that would be okay i h2o plants you just missed did you miss my power outage man crazy things are happening today today's a crazy day Whew. so let's see man i think it's, it's kind of interesting though at least let me see if i can get banana because i've been showing you guys everybody except banana come here where did she go? Banana? Oh, you're behind me. Oh, oh, there you are. Hold on. <gasps> Hi, Banana. Where are you going? Are you going to show everyone your teddy bear? Or what? Where are, you, where are you going? What are you going to do? So this is Banana. I adopted her from Paws, Chicago. She is a little over two years old. That is her teddy bear. And she has a rainbow unicorn tail because she's super fancy. And I have like, oh my god, I have like bras in my live stream. This is so unprepared! Ugh! Okay. Man, yeah, sit. Do something pretty. Can you dance? Dance for everyone. Good job! Spin! Or get your teddy bear. What? You wanna, you want, you wanna play with your teddy bear? Is that what's gonna happen? This live stream is by far... Mm -hmm. Oh, I chill plants wrong. That's my teddy bear. It's actually a doggy teddy bear. We got it from Kong. Hi. Are you going to share? Are you going to share? Oh, Cynthia says hi. You're her favorite. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You will steal her. No. 
You cannot steal a banana. She's too adorable. Are you gonna we're gonna play tug of war? We're gonna play tug of war. Tug of war and live stream. Yeah, you happy? She's like, this is great. My owner is talking to the phone, but at least she's playing with me. Let me see if I can see some of the more kinds. By the way, you got 45 thumbs up so far what I see. So thank you so much for that. But in a sit. <gasps> Spin. No, it's not that. That's the wrong thing. Spin. Good job. Down. Roll over. No, wait. Down. Down. Roll over. <gasps> Good job. Catch. She tries to catch with her paws. Did you see that? Are you going to do water change Wednesday? Should I start doing that? I feel, I feel like I'm prone to disasters and I'm always like spilling things and I feel like it's going to be a live video of me like setting my python hose like going off and it's going to like fly out of here and just spill all over my bedroom and all of my kitchen and <laughs> everyone says yes. What I need to do is I need to get a tripod with a uh, phone mount. So I can mount my phone and then set it so I can do that. Because I don't think one-handedly I will drop my phone into the tank. That's totally going to happen. Let's see. Do you follow no Super Collies? Uh, actually, I do. I've met Sarah from Super Collies. Uh, she's going to be in my, I think, future vlog on my vlog channel. Because we went to Colorado together. Um, I should probably switch the camera to me as I'm talking. There we go. So we went to Colorado with uh, Sarah and the Super Collies as well as um, Trevor from Doggy Dojo and we went on this awesome hike. My, um, excuse me, my bonus channel is called um, Creative Pet Vlogs. So if you want to go over there and check it out, then um, I'm going to be posting a lot of vlogs and other stuff from there. Unfortunately, I only got to hang out with her doggies a little bit because um, Hero was getting ready for all the America's Got Talent stuff so he couldn't uh, play with any of the dogs in case he got some sort of injury because he needs to perform and then Marvel doesn't really like other dogs too well so Banana only really hung out with um, Loki the little one and he Loki fell in love with Banana I, th I think I have a video of our live stream and uh, in that video we had to constantly separate uh, banana and Loki because he was in love. It, there was some puppy love going on. Let's see. So let me look at the comments again. Water change Wednesday is a good idea. <laughs> I think I'll have to do that. Once I set up um, a, kind of like a tripod or something and I need to also get an extension cord so I can plug my phone in so that way uh, my phone doesn't die because it's another thing. My phone battery doesn't last very long. I think that might be a thing, maybe. It might not be like an every week kind of thing, but it might be from time to time because I also want to talk about other pets and stuff like that. Also, let's see who else is in here. Sergeant Tank! Hello! Oh my gosh, I feel so fancy now because back in the past, I didn't have a lot of fish keepers that came to my channel and I feel like they're all coming now and I'm like, yay! I'm being accepted into the fish keeping community. I finally feel worthy enough. I even have a fishy themed shirt. Look. It's Little Mermaid and Pokemon and it's got Crab and it's got Derby Magikarp and Squirtle. See? It's like, it's all meant to be. I didn't even know I was going to live stream today. I thought I was just going to film my pets and I was like, you know what? Flip Aquatics was like live streaming and I finally caught him on his live stream and then I was like, I'll just go after him and then you guys were like, yay! Ah, <sighs> when you were selling your bettas, would you ship to the UK? Um, unfortunately I can't ship outside of the US at the moment because I don't even know how I would even begin to do that, figuring out how to do a trans shipper and all that stuff and because I've never shipped fish before, I want to keep it really, really uh, easy Oh, and H2O Plants is going to be streaming later. Yes, it's like, a, it's like a stream party today. That's kind of fun, though, too. Like, going from one to another. Plus, what I like listening to other streamers because then I can do water changes and stuff like that while I'm uh, listening. The downside is I can't comment then because I can't do water changes and comment at the same time. 
Banana, come here. Come hang out while I talk to everyone. Come come up here in the bed. Right here. Oh, oh okay. Okay, you you she's like, I'm I'm right here. It's all your pets. This is Derp Angle. She loves getting petted. Look at that happy face. Oh, happy face. Have you guys seen all of Banana's videos in her banana show? I have a whole playlist for the banana talking dog show because she talks. Sometimes. Not all the time because she's embarrassed. But sometimes she talks. And uh, I also have another playlist of like all her camping adventures and stuff before I started putting uh, all the vlogs on the other vlog. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your kisses. So give her some love. All the better fish get all the love. Banana needs some more love too. Let's see if I can look through more of the comments while she's giving me kisses. Let's see, please help. I tried to spawn my better pair, Red Dragon, Half Moon Placket, but the male didn't squeeze the female. There was everything needed, including the bubble nest. How could I get him to... Hmm. Is he, is he a young male? He might be kind of inexperienced. Um... You know, hmm, that's a tough question for me to ask. Maybe someone in the comments might reply, because I've only bred one pair, and I've never, I haven't come across any issues with those guys, so I don't really have enough experience. Uh, so, uh, let me get comfy. Banana got comfy. Look at her. She's like, I'm, I'm ready, guys, to be comfortable. But maybe you guys can help in the comments. There's a lot of really good readers that are here. Wah! And I'm comfortable sitting in my bed. By the way, I think I finally will get a P.O. box because finally I got six uh, supporters on Patreon. And I think that will cover the cost of getting a P.O. box. So yay for Patreon helping awesome things happen. So, woo. By the way, my Patreon is uh, patreon.com slash creativepetkeeping. And on there, um, what's it called? You guys... Uh, can pledge different amounts to help my channel. There's also a special tier for betta fish where when I sell my betta fish my Patreon supporters from that tier will be the very first to know. So if you want uh, first pick of the baby bettas before the world knows and I make a video about it, that's, that's your way to go. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, Mobile Gaming uh, also pointed out, check out Banana's Facebook page. She does have a Facebook page. Is, is the thing, is it Banana the dog? I think it's been out of the dog. Yeah, on Facebook. Where she talks too. Are you itchy? What? She's she's getting ready. She's like, oh, will you pet me? I will put my paws up if you pet my tummies. She loves tummy rubs. If anyone ever meets her, then um rub her tummy. That is how you win her over to love you forever. Will I uh Stefan DC is asking, will I consider bringing bettas again? Uh Let's see. I think so. I think what I might do is I might have a little short break after I sell the first batch so I can kind of pre-plan and reset things. But I think so. I might get into it more. Maybe. Uh, it's, uh, oh, more comments. Do I know Solid Gold? I have spoken to her via email. I don't know if that counts as really knowing her yet. But I've never met her and I do follow her. I've actually been watching her channel uh, for a long time. Uh, let's see. My check box isn't working. Uh, simply better. Yeah, I've had that problem when I was on Flip Aquatics, uh, live stream. Uh, I had to constantly do the pop out the chat and then close it so it pops back in and that would reset the chat box. So I've been doing that back and forth. I don't know, maybe YouTube is having issues. Also, there is 90 of you guys here so far that I see and 66 likes. So woo! That's really awesome. And the do 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 do. <laughs> Amazing Jenny, will you not notice me? It's been ten minutes. Jenny, you have been you have been noticed. You have been acknowledged. Um Let's see. Jazz King, my female betta made a small bubble nest. When I checked the next day there were eggs in the nest. But she has never been in the same 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 tank as a male. How did that happen? Females will drop eggs sometimes when they get really full. Uh, my female Koi did that. Let me show you her right now. She's actually pretty thin looking because she's not full of eggs. But when she was around, this, this girl right here, when she was around uh, the male in a divided tank, she got really, really pudgy. 
and was full of eggs and she was so full of eggs that she started dropping them they just as she swam around they would just fall out of her so what I'm thinking is your female is probably full of eggs and as they were dropping she decided to just make her own bubble nest and put them in there because instinct told her because when males and females breed sometimes females will also help put the male put the eggs in there so that's probably what happened let's see do, 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 do. hashtag fish fam that needs to be that needs to be a thing more more often at least over here I don't think I've ever used the hashtag fish fam and by the way that was said by Danny's Aquariums you should check out his channel cuz he's pretty cool man my phone is so hot right now <laughs> I'm holding it I'm scrolling through the comments and it's like on fire I think besides the power outage the second thing that's gonna happen is my phone might explode luckily I don't have which phones were the ones that were exploding was uh, the n note Samsung Note or something? Luckily, that's not what I have. I have a Galaxy. <sighs> Which baby beta is your favorite? Oh man, that's hard. Um, let's go back. So I'm torn between Arnold because he's so weird, and right now he looks bigger because there's like a the divot right here distorts him so he, he's not that huge but he's pretty big he's really big and he's got this little mustache going on and he's starting to show red so he's one of my favorites but then I also liked the this one right here that is turning predominantly red but has one black eye and then the other one is normal and this and this actually this one was supposed to be going to someone else and it was supposed to be a boy but I'm starting to think this is a girl because she's acting like a girl and she's starting to get pudgy like a girl so that is also another reason why I'm taking my time to before I sell them is because I really want to be able to tell their genders to the best of my ability and them being plaquettes doesn't really help make it that easy I mean some of them like this guy has a you know he's developed such a long tail and he has a beard that's really pronounced and so does this guy and this guy so these guys make it really easy but some of my fish make it a little confusing for me so that's something I have to learn and get better in especially because this was my first spawn and then from the baby tank this one was my favorite I don't know if I like the fact that he is marbling and changing patterns so quickly uh, I think he might be changing a little too fast for me but for a while this one was definitely my favorite as well but I'm curious to see what the other ones will turn out to be like there's a couple interesting ones there's a couple ones that are probably should have been culls because their bodies aren't in the best shape so I don't know what's gonna happen I know this guy will probably might be because I mean this one has a really thin body and hasn't been eating very well so there's still some that are kind of odd but we'll see we'll figure it out uh, let's see what else let me see if I can scroll through some of more comments What? Please play Batim, Batim, Batim? I don't even know what that means. That is so confusing. I'm like scrolling through. Uh, how many decades do you think it will take to make a line of bettas that are docile and can cohabitate? Also, do you know if anyone is breeding out aggression in bettas? That was asked by D Damon, Damon Grayson. Uh, that's a good question, actually. That is something that I have been thinking about for a while. I have been considering maybe being the first crazy person to try it. I don't think people tried because they didn't really, it wasn't something you needed to do. But the fact that a lot of people, especially in Asia, for the beta spiting, spiting, beta fighting sport did selectively breed 
fed us to be more aggressive for the um, sake of fight fighting them the domestic betta turns out to be more aggressive than the wild bettas actually are so it would be really um, good to I think maybe try to breed but at the same time I don't know how that's going to affect the bettas uh, because you know they do have to be kind of sassy and a little aggressive to breed with each other but I think it would take if, if it happened it wouldn't be super fast <sighs> maybe I would say mm, like five to eight years maybe of really really selective breeding and I don't even know how you would go about selecting the best temperament beta I guess you could choose the ones that are least aggressive inside of their spawn tank and breed those, those that you don't have to jar. Um, but I don't know. I think I would like to try it. I don't know if I would successfully be able to pull it off though. Uh, let's see. Princess Lunchbox says, I tried to breed for temperament years ago and I found it makes spine difficult because instinctually the females want a more aggressive male as it will make fry with a better ability to spawn. Yeah, that's that's kind of, that's what I thought would become an issue. Because I know males have to fight each other. You know, the healthy ones that are spunky and uh, aggressive usually would indicate a healthy fish. So, hmm, I wonder. <sighs> it would be, it would be hard, I think. But on the other hand, if it happened, it would change the beta keeping, like, industry as a whole. Because they would no longer have to be fish that a lot of people choose to keep in bowls and small containers. Also, I need to make a video about betta bowls because uh, I used to be really, really anti-betta bowls. Like, like, had a petition on change.org going against betta bowls. That's how against it I used to be. And um, because I had a bad experience when I was a kid, I had a betta in a bowl and it got sick and it died and I didn't know how to take care of it really well and then I, I known some people that were my friends that also had bettas and kept them in bowls and they also kept them in kind of really bad conditions so that kind of made me like kind of super anti betta bowls but then once I got into the breeding aspect I realized that there are people that can uh, keep a betta healthy in a larger bowl. Some people will plant them, some people will add filters and heaters in them. And then also when you do breed you have to separate your babies. There's no possible way to keep, you know, hundreds of fry safe from murdering each other without separating them. Like I'm separating these little guys right now. And even when they're here, and they're getting daily water changes. I don't like it because I feel like it is such a small space and it does bother me. But they have clean water. It's pretty warm here so their temperature is warm. I put in plants for them to help maintain the water quality. They have almond leaves. They get to flare at each other and have mental stimulation. So it's not the end of the world. So I think definitely my views have changed and I feel like I should probably make a video about it. Updating it because I think my uh, better, uh, the top betta myth video that I made that was super anti betta bowl. I think that kind of had a negative influence on the industry and I feel like I need to kind of fix that because I don't want to encourage people to kind of go after an attack and get super emotionally upset when they do see a better bowl because in some cases it, it, it will work. If you put in the work and uh, you, it's, it's, you know, has enough space and you take care of it and has stable temperature and good water parameters, it's, it turns out that it's fine. But, yeah, that's kind of, I'm like walking around the entire house. You guys get an entire house tour. Unplanned. Where did my comments go? Oh, there we go. Do, do, do. So you guys are discussing things on here. How do you tell if a fish has fin rot and how do you treat it? Um, from what I remember is when fish have fin rot, their fins kind of look black on the edges. And to me, the fastest and best way to treat fin rot was just very frequent water changes. If you improve your water changes, 
usually fin rot will uh, go away and the fins will heal on their own. Also, while I'm here, I noticed something cute. This is so adorable. It's kitty cuddle time. They kind of squished their cat cave. Well, he's trying to cuddle her. Oh, he's being a butt, and she's like, no, go away. And she's kicking him in the face. Little foot, you're so mean to Mookie. He's just trying to groom himself. Look at these kitty, kitty cuddles. Someone's purring. I think it's Mookie. Oh, oh, she's gonna beat. Really? She's gonna grab him and forcibly lick him. This is a very weird relationship they have going on. It is. It's like love and, and biting and licking, and then she left. You guys are experiencing some weird stuff today. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Today is a magical live stream full of many things, many wonders, and adventures, and things. And by the way, we reached 77 likes on here. I'm really happy about that. My phone just, just made a thing. And Tommy made it! Hi! We have another another admin, not well, moderator, in our Minxed, which is really good. By the way, thank you guys. I've noticed that you guys have been moderating and deleting comments because when I'm on my phone, I don't, have no clue how to delete comments. It's such a pain in the butt. So you guys are really helping. So thank you to the moderator team for being awesome and really helpful. And by the way, that is a painting my friend did of me and a black cat. That is another random thing. This is full of like random things, but I guess it's fun to hang out and talk and show you a lot of stuff and I guess show you a little bit of my life and how I live and let you answer, I mean let me answer some questions and stuff because yeah we gotta make friends and I just showered earlier so my, my hair is crazy. Got the rocking the mermaid hair again. It's drying but it's still wavy. I gotta re-dye the pink. But um, what else? is going on in the comments hey have you ever considered owning a reptile amphibian or lizard and that was asked by scales paws and slime uh i actually really want a bearded dragon i don't think i have the space to get a tank that's large enough to properly house one but i really love bearded dragons for sure um i thought about snakes but my issue is that i've had mice as pets before and gerbils and while I understand snakes have to eat it's the circle of life I feel really sad even if I see the a dead feeder mice it makes me sad so it's just like a personal thing like struggle internal struggle that I have with myself I do actually like to watch other youtubers that own snakes even if they feed um, their uh, snakes as long as it's not life feeding and one of my favorite youtubers for snakes is Viper Keeper he keeps a lot of venomous and poisonous snakes, and what I really like about him, phone is making sounds. Uh, what I really like about him is that he doesn't do any live feeding, uh, in the sense that he doesn't feed any live animals on camera. So he will feed frozen and already pre-killed animals to snakes, and then if he has certain snakes that won't take anything else but live food, he will feed them off camera, just to kind of like respect um, those people that you know own those. Uh, pets so I really like that <sighs> someone asked thinking about breeding my double tail pair any important super inf important information I actually have no clue um, I've never owned double tails and I don't know anything about them I have no experience but maybe one of the breeders that are in here with us hanging out may be able to answer that question for you guys and let's see, do do do, oh, whoa, oh, I switched it, oh, by the way, by accident, but photos, family photos, that's Banana, when I first adopted her, that was her photo in Paul Chicago, she used to be called Angie in the shelter, and then I, I like to take photos, so I took this photograph of a tiger, this is a female in Brookfield Zoo, she got stuck, uh, getting too close to her father, and he grabbed her by the tail, and he started pulling her tail, and the mother grabbed her and pulled her back and saved her life, but she had to have her tail amputated. And this was my first ever dog. Her name was Chiquita. And I think I have two videos of her, very old videos, on my channel if you're interested in checking her out. And that's Littlefoot as a little kitten. Me and my cousin, and my parents, and then me again. And that's one of my previous guinea pigs, uh, Winnie. So you got to 
learn a little bit more about my life. Uh, will you ha ever have guinea pigs again? I would like to, uh, but I would like to have the proper space for them. So in this case, this whole area right here, from here to the end, used to actually be my huge guinea pig fortress. And if you look at my older videos, you will see it. And they had plenty of room to run around. So if I would have guinea pigs, I would love to give them that much room again. Uh, with my bunny, I can't, you know, I let her be running, I let her run around the house. With my guinea pigs, they used to poop everywhere, so it wasn't possible. So I needed a humongous um, cage for them. So let's see. Do, 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 do. do you follow Big Cat Rescue? Actually, I know of them. I've seen. Uh, a few of their videos, and I think they're pretty cool. Um, one thing that uh, does make me a little worried is that they are very anti-exotic uh, animal ownership, and in most cases I agree. For example, I don't think people should own tigers and lions as pets, but there are some smaller exotic animals that I think are okay to be kept in captivity, and they have a sh pretty strong stance against all animal exotic ownership and i don't blame them because they have they get a ton of animals that people irresponsibly keep and then they have to take care of these animals for the rest of their lives so i kind of get it so i mean i like them but at the same time i i would like for people to be able to own certain exotic pets as long as it's within you know reason and you know not the crazy ones uh do 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 Let's see what else. I can I'm gonna scroll up and see what other comments I might have missed. I have a male beta and a female who used to live together but won't anymore. They are both in large tanks. How do I put them back together? If you have males and females, they're gonna have to stay separated for, for the rest of their lives. Um I seen very rare instances where you could keep males and females together. I've tried it once in the past and it worked because of dumb luck. I don't think it would ever work again for me if I tried it. I just happened to have a male in the past that was not interested in breeding at all. He was just a really docile dude that kind of just liked swimming around so all the females just ignored him because he was just this dopey little guy. Uh, and they just kind of let each other be. But in most cases, unless you have a really huge tank, and by huge I mean like probably 75 gallon or more, I wouldn't mix male and female. I know some people can pull it off. And, you know, I've even heard of some people uh, keep males together. I know that there is a member of the, um, what's it called? Uh, Greater Chicago Cichlid Association that besides breeding cichlids, He's bred some bettas, and he actually kept the males that he grew out all together in a tank. And they're all siblings. He took out the females, and they're all together right now, apparently, and they're they're doing fine. Which is, mm, excuse me, really weird that it worked. And I'm assuming it probably worked because they were siblings, and maybe because the tank was possibly large enough. So, I don't really... I don't know. It's kind of... I've always wanted to try to keep two males or more males together, but it's tricky. I've kept them together while separating them in breeding containers before. And I would have one in the tank. So let me show you the tank that I used to do it in. So in this tank, I used to have one male that would swim around. And I would have the other one in the breeding container. And then I would swap them. So I would let the male go. And then the other one would swim into the breeding container. And then he would be in there. So they, I would rotate them every day like that. And they were trained to swim into the breeding containers willingly. Because they would always get food in there. So they knew they were going to get fed. So it gave them uh, reason to uh, willingly go in there. And I have some videos on my Facebook page. Creative Pet Keeping on Facebook. Of me doing it. And eventually what I accomplished is these two males would swim past each other as one was exiting the breeding container and the other one was going in and they would completely ignore each other and like not care because they got so used to each other. But that's kind of as far as I got. Um, they still had to be separated. They couldn't like live together unattended. But it was kind of an interesting uh, social kind of experiment for fish, a behavioral experiment. 
And my phone is dying. I have 15% left. So I think that well, this stream has been going on for almost uh, 50 minutes. And I think I am going to go now, guys. Because my phone is going to die and it's kind of been overheating. But I've had so much fun hanging out with you guys. You guys were so awesome. I loved all the questions and I hope that you enjoyed seeing all my pets. And yeah, it was super awesome. I will see you guys on my next video on Fish Fan Friday. And before that, I will try to have a video on my vlog channel, Creative Pet Vlogs. I'll have another uh, part of the Colorado adventure because I'm still not done editing all of those videos so thank you so much you guys are super super awesome thank you again to flip aquatics for encouraging me to stream and thank you for joining me